Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Christopher Schrader and I am the president of the Meteorological Research and Education Organization. But here you know me as WX0CAS, my amateur radio call sign. As we've stated before, these podcasts are going to be something to set up for emergency preparedness and disaster education. So each and every podcast is going to be a part of a different part of that. Uh, When we're doing this, there's going to be kind of a theme to most of these that are not only going to be just around the emergency broadcasting or emergency preparedness, but in addition, we're going to have a a micro theme on each one. Um, This one's going to be the first part of a couple part series. Um, We're going to be talking about communication platforms. There's different ways of getting communications between uh, in anybody, individuals, the emergency management world, fire department, police officers, 911, all of those. And uh, today we're really going to be focusing on one of those platforms or one of those types of platforms, which is the social media. Everybody out there has a social media of some sort, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or um, what's the other one? Twitter. Uh, there's a new one that is now starting to come up in the emergency preparedness world. It's called Next Door, and that one is uh, something that's more like a local community oriented, while everyone else is worldwide. Uh, we were doing a conference not too long ago here in uh, Colorado Springs in El Paso County, Colorado, where we are stationed out of here. And uh, we are talking about different parts of what can we use as emergency management to be to put into the community, something that we can be able to have in the community that can be able to get back to us. And one of the main things was talking about social media. And in that process, I was figuring it would be a good time to bring it up here as our very first podcast, because technically speaking, most of you have found my podcast by social media. So therefore, you're already on a social media platform. And um, we're already on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and a few others, YouTube and a few others, which are really big deals of the platforms. I mean, most of these platforms you're going to be familiar with, um, but each one of them has advantages and disadvantages of what's going on. One of the main advantages of all social media is that it's nearly instant, especially on Twitter. Twitter is a very big in the media breaking news now everything that you need now comes through twitter unless you're me and you don't use twitter very often then you're finding it out four five six seven days later uh a buddy of mine uh she she lives on twitter um pretty much anytime that her phone is in her hand twitter is sending her a notification of something and uh that's one of the things that we're we're working with with emergency management is using twitter as a wonderful platform so The big thing that I'm going to be bringing up in this podcast is uh, broken down into a couple different points. Um, Things that you should be looking for inside of a tweet, um, or inside of social media to begin with, not just Twitter. Also, things that you can look for to disseminate, is this real information? Is this uh, rumored information? And also, um, any uh, instructions on how to follow them. And uh, pretty much just break down how most of these social media outlets have all the systems set up. Um, one of the units that we had here in El Paso County not too long ago was our, we, we call it the bomb cyclone, which has been a big deal in our community ever since it happened earlier this year. In March of 2019, we had a massive snowstorm blizzard come through and pretty much just it, it pounded all of most all of Colorado. And uh, most of it actually hammered farther south than what was initially thought a couple of days earlier. And it caused a lot of issues in the community. Um, but a lot of information was learned, and not even a month later, there was another threat for a bomb cyclone, and it ended up not happening. Um, I was one of the unfortunate people. I actually was working on the day of the bomb cyclone, and I was stuck in a bus for 24 hours waiting for the roads to reopen so I could keep going home. And I was still 40 miles from home before I could even do anything. 
and it, it was a, a very big deal. Um, so the second one I ended up staying home for, and nothing ever happened. We had a little bit of snow flurries, but the threat of it was pretty significant. One of the major components during this bomb cyclone, because of how quickly systems changed and how the road conditions in different areas went from decent to insanely bad and how fast that went the local enforcement here both the law enforcement firefighters and even the emergency operations the emergency management office relied on social media to get the public the information as quickly as they were getting it um here in colorado springs not only is our city broken up by streets, but we kind of have our own little sections. We talk about like the north end, and you'll hear me this on the podcast, north end of the springs, or the west end of the springs, the east side, or even the the south side. Um, The north end really sits more closer towards the Palmer Divide, and they have a tendency of getting a pretty good amount of snow. But on the west side, they're right at the foothills of the mountains. So they're getting constantly cold temperatures, and they get a lot more snow. Farther on the east side of Colorado Springs, they're more in the plains area. And again, keep in mind, this is all in one city. The east side of Colorado Springs is more in the plains, so they get a lot of wind and a lot more of the warmer temperatures, so it's not as cold. But when a storm like this comes through, there's nothing to block it from the wind. Whereas on the west side, there's a big giant mountain, or one of the mountains we call Pikes Peak, that sits 14,000 feet in the air, really does a good job at blocking the wind that comes out of the west. And then on the south side, it's more of a a valley, and a lot of the snow that comes from the north, like from Denver area, doesn't really quite make it down there. But if you've got a storm coming up from Albuquerque, the storm system pretty much buries that whole area. So one of the the things on social media that we were talking about in this uh, conference recently was um, there's three points to the social media that we bring up. It's uh, in most social media points in the news, you'll see this. What happened? How does it affect that area? And what is one thing that that organization is doing to be able to get more information for you? Um, most of these organizations set up to where they can be able to get you information ahead of time. Here in Colorado, we get these things called snowstorms and blizzards. Over on the East Coast, you all have these things called hurricanes. Um, Not too long ago, we had one that came through. It looked like it was going to do some big devastation here to the United States and ended up doing an abrupt turn and stayed out in the ocean the entire time. This hurricane then went all the way up the coastline, went into Canada, crossed over Canada, went back into the ocean, and kept going way past where we were able to forecast it. But it affected more areas than originally were thought. But the two things that these things have in common are predictions. They were able to see snowstorms and also hurricanes a couple days out in advance. Understanding how the meteorological works, they can be able to warn it. So a lot of these uh, entities, such as here in El Paso County, we have the Pikes Peak Office of Emergency Management. These guys, are, their entire job is to ensure that when a disaster strikes, they're prepared and their community is also prepared. So they'll be messaging out over Facebook, Twitter, stuff like that, showing, hey, this is what's coming. Y'all need to be ready for it. And here's how you can be ready for it. But a lot of people, and we're going to talk about these in other podcasts as we go, is preparations for different types of events and weather. Um, In this podcast, we're going to have a bunch of different preparations for um, different things here in Colorado Springs area and and around. And we're going to start venturing out into other areas because we understand this this podcast channel will go around the world. But one of the big things that we don't have early, early, early warning system to, and by that I mean days and then warning, is tornadoes. Or if you're in California, earthquakes. Earthquakes, you have, you you feel it, and it's there. And that's pretty much your warning. You start feeling things. 
Um, I know that there are some advancements in science now that are getting it closer and closer to that point where we can be able to get more and more of the uh, advantages of knowing what's going on. But we haven't quite got as good as we do for hurricanes and blizzards. Here in Colorado, on the eastern side, eastern Colorado Springs has a pretty good chance of getting a tornado out there. Versus the west side being up against the mountains, their chances are still there, but not quite as strong as before. So, an incident response is what you're going to be getting on your Twitter all the time. This is exactly what the National Weather Service issues on their warnings. National Weather Service has issued a severe thunderstorm warning. Take action immediately. The National Weather Service issued a tornado warning for your area. Seek shelter. When you get those warnings, you should take them as, we have to work with this. We have to understand these. Because each of those warnings are taken not lightly. At the ending of a a disaster, such as the uh, bomb cyclone that we had here in Colorado Springs, we really had a lot to deal with for the... uh, the cleanup. We had a lot of roads that end up being closed that were buried in snow. And we're not talking like what New York gets where they get like a 15 foot snowstorm. We still had a good foot, foot and a half. Some places even had six foot tall drifts of snow over the highway. And it took time for them to clean it up. But our biggest thing was the ice. The ice was so bad in areas that it just, it froze things in place and it was one of those interesting points now one of the things that we we're going to talk about first before we go to our commercial break here is uh beware of rumors on social media how can you be able to disseminate between what's a rumor and what's fact the simplest thing is when an entity such as the Colorado Springs Police Department or a police department, a fire department, or an office of emergency management, or any of those, the public health, anything like that, FEMA, and they do this stuff too. When they send out a notification, they send out a link that goes to one of their web pages. If you're getting information from your social media and it doesn't have a link to a credible source news station or a um uh entity such as the police department fire department ems any of those and there's no links to them and it sounds crazy and insane it more than likely is a rumor about something going on if you have doubts on something that you're reading always go to your local affiliates page because their websites have their twitter and facebook and instagram and all those accounts on their website, most places do, at least like in Colorado Springs, ours are right there on the front page. You can go and look on the Facebook and say, oh yeah, so this person really did do this, or this road really is closed, or something like that. And a lot of these entities will continue those on, because it's easy to work with, making sure that the right information actually reaches the people that need it. One of the other things to look for when you're looking at social media is when an entity such as, we're going to say, the fire department says there's a fire on such and such street, we need you to stay away from it, right below it would be their link. Also, every single organization has a certified page set up in their system. So you can look and say, hey, let's check this page, see where it came from. If it's just a single individual, more than likely it's not a factual message that someone else is fabricating it. The problem with these fabrication messages is it's causing people to freak out over something that doesn't exist. And uh, what we're going to do when we come back from our commercial break, we're going to talk about the different platforms that you can work with, how you can be able to check each platform, make sure each one is the correct, correct style, and also how you can be able to subscribe to your local entities of tweets, Facebooks, and Instagrams. So we're going to go ahead and go to a quick break, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. So we'll see you soon.
And we're back. So, yes, we're about halfway through our podcast here. A little bit uh, under our halfway mark, actually. And we're talking about our social media and the social media platforms that we can be able to receive our information from. Most people have a Facebook account or a Twitter account or an Instagram account or they belong to to YouTube or in this other new platform called Nextdoor. You might be connected on that as well. All these systems have the same thing in common, though. It's social, getting people to be more connected in more areas. A lot of times we hear that being on our phones can disrupt our social life. And in cases, that's true. But also, in a country, in a society, we've never been more connected on bigger topics. Uh, For instance, when we had the uh, bomb cyclone here in El Paso County, the county's page for their Facebook received 12,000 additional views on one post about the the uh, cyclone than they've seen before because people were needing the information. So whereas our society lives off of this stuff, we can still be able to use it to get the information out. But it also means people can be able to use it to give you false information. So the best thing to be able to do to make sure that you're getting the proper information and you're getting the proper information in a very quick and timely manner is to register with your local entity. So for instance, here in Colorado Springs, we have the Colorado Springs Police Department has a Twitter page. So when something happens in Colorado Springs, the public information individual who's in that office will actually send out live information through Twitter and Facebook and all those. Local news media will actually use this tweet or this Facebook or these links that are being sent to assist them with their broadcasting as well. And they, too, have Twitter, Twitter, Facebook, and uh, Instagram for most occasions. So the best thing to do is let's we all have our favorite news source. When we want our local stuff, our local news we go to one news station and we say this is my only news station i only listen to them that's great if you want up to date every detail that you possibly can get especially when it's your local community that could be involved it might not be a bad idea to go and subscribe to each of these local entities so for instance here in Colorado Springs, we have four news networks. Channel 5, Channel 11, Channel 13, and Channel 21. They all have Facebook accounts. Go to them, click follow, or click like, and then when they post something, you can be able to receive that information very quickly. Um, if you're like me, and you're a weather nut like I am, anything that has to do with the National Weather Service always sits at the top of my, my uh, timeline. Right when they post something, it's right there. Facebook has the ability that you can be able to make certain entities or certain pages a favorite. So when they post something, it becomes top of your timeline. I believe last time I checked, because it's been quite a while since I've set those up, Facebook has it limited to where you only had 10 favorites. So that way you can be able to not be overwhelmed by having... 350 favorites and then it just looks no different than your timeline um for me i have my favorite news station is on there and i also have the national weather service for my area on there and uh, the national weather service is another really good tool to have because it doesn't just work with just your neighborhood it also works with the entire district Each section of the country is assigned to a National Weather Service office. So, for instance, here in Colorado Springs, our National Weather Service office is actually in Pueblo. But I go north to Castle Rock, which is about a 35 to 45 minute drive, depending on traffic. They're in the jurisdiction of Boulder. But Boulder goes all the way out east towards Lyman. I know a lot of you guys, people probably don't know where these towns are, but... For us, it shows how large these areas are. So a lot of times if you're like me and you you know, okay, the storm systems really come from more north, I subscribe to both Pueblo and Boulder 
so I can well get information from both. But the National Weather Service, on flip turn because of how large they are, will put out a notification if anything is in their entire area. So sometimes I do get Pueblo's responses, or I get Trinidad, which is down by the border of Colorado and New Mexico. Or I can even get all the way out east in La Junta, which is like a two and a half hour drive away from me, and the storm systems move even farther from me when they go through. So stuff like that sometimes doesn't work. You can well get on to your local entities. Colorado Springs Police Department will also re-message. I want to say retweet, but retweet is only for Twitter. They re-message things that will apply to their jurisdiction. So being in a city, then when the National Weather Service says, okay, well, in Pueblo, we have this. Well, Colorado Springs Police Department won't re-message that out. But when they say there's a bomb cyclone and the entire state is at risk, they'll send it out because it applies to them as well. So when you're looking at different platforms to to get messages from, you want to know what you want to look into. If you really want to stay like super local, then next door is a super local app system that they have set up now. It's a very, very new social media deal, and I have personally never used it. But from what I have heard from others who have used it, is it's just your local next-door neighbor community. And all those systems work together. When you work with a system like that, the downside is you're not going to get the worldwide view. But the upside is only what matters to your community goes to your community. And it makes a big, big difference on that. Now, if you're like me and you sit on Facebook and Twitter... Um, when I used Twitter, I used it all the time to be up to date on what was going on. Uh, when I would get a notification out that there's a tornado warning for my county, it would be notified through my Twitter. And that came through from my county sheriff's office, El Paso County Sheriff's Office. But more local, you can subscribe to other entities. Now, some areas, like I believe there is one section in California their entities have an entity within them. So a city and a county are essentially the same thing. And I think we have one of those here in Denver too. Denver County and Denver City are all in one. But that's just because of how large they are. And you can be able to get different news from each of those. When you're working with different news stations, you got to think of be aware of of what they already have rolling. Some news stations are really active. Like, for instance, uh, KKTV 11 News, that's our local news affiliate here, they are very, very, very on top of weather. When anything could be weather in their area, they are on top of it. They are constantly sending out tweets and Facebook messages alerting the public. Whereas Fox 21... They're weather-oriented, but they're more wide-scale weather-oriented. So you got to learn your local media. Find out which one is going to benefit your style. So it's a, a learning game on those. Once you have subscribed to these, you can be able to get the constant information that you, or you need to be up to date. An advantage of having them before a storm system comes in is that way you already have everything set up. So when something comes up, it comes through. Now, there's, again, you're going to be getting a lot of messages from each of them because their whole goal is to get all the information out. News stations will also push breaking news alerts. Sometimes it's not weather related. Sometimes it's uh, this road's closed because of a water main break or this road's closed because of police activity or whatever. And stuff like that, after a couple of days of that, it can get, get weary on there. So just kind of understand social media is not the end-all answer. But it's a really good platform for you guys to use on pretty much everything that we work with. When we talk more into our communications coming up in later episodes, like our next episode, we're going to talk about ham radio. Uh, I am a ham radio operator, WX0CAS, so I'm very, very um, biased towards you need a ham radio. Uh, We're going to talk about that in our next episode. But 
the main thing to remember on all of these different systems is they all have their advantages and disadvantages. And you have to figure out which ones will work for your lifestyle. Me personally, I'm a wide net. I want as much information as I can possibly get, as fast as I can get, and as accurate as I can possibly have. Because that's just the world I live in. Some people are like, oh, I only want this information, or I only want this type of information, and that's where the different points will come into play. One of the things I want to talk about before we end this podcast, since it's our very first podcast, is if you have any ideas on something to talk about, disaster-related or, or otherwise, send them to us. We've got our website and our email everywhere. We have our email as contactus at mariowx.org. So send it to us there. We can be able to then read it. I'll read it personally. And um, if it's something more I want to work with on the podcast and I need more information, I'll email you back. Um, We want to get your questions, your comments, your concerns emailed to us or commented on all of our social media accounts. We've got all those. So please give us your feedback. And this show is going to be for you guys. What do you want to hear out of it to be prepared for a disaster? Keep in mind, we are going to be a focusing our entire show on the country, but we're going to be bringing a lot of different aspects of our local area here in the Colorado Springs or Colorado area, just because this is where I'm broadcasting from. I'm coming from uh, my apartment here in Colorado Springs. Wanted to make it a little more local for people as well. But please, please send us your information that you want to know and keep in contact with us. Let us know how we're doing out here. I uh, ran a uh, podcast a while back and it's my first time coming back in on this, so I'm still a little bit rusty. But we want to hear from you so that we can be able to better all of this service. So again, contact us at mariowx.org. If you're in the El Paso County area and you want to learn more about what we do for our education programs here in El Paso County of Colorado, go ahead and go to our website, mariowx.org, and you can be able to learn what we have there. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this episode up with social media, and I have a feeling that I'm going to get some notifications from y'all that you want more detail on different platforms. If that's the case, send it to me, and we'll do an episode on each of the platforms. This is just an in-general first podcast to be able to get this ball rolling, and we're going to have a lot more to go. So... Send us those thoughts, send us those comments, and we'll be going from there. Thank you guys so much for listening to here at WX0CAS, and we're going to go ahead and turn this over to our ending track. is a part of the Murillo Disaster Education Program. To learn more, visit www.murillowx.org. Intro song by Scott Holmes, Hotshot. And credit song by Lobo Loco, Old West Brain. All recordings are copyrighted 2019. To use in educational settings, email us at contactus at murillowx.org.